Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the Elemental Maker. Today, on our quest to make synthetic ruby with the HHO torch, we first got to make aluminum oxide of pretty good purity. So what I have here is some aluminum that we previously melted down out of soda cans. Now soda cans are actually a very, very pure grade of aluminum. I think well over 99%. So what we're going to do, we're going to dissolve this sucker in some HCl, just, you know, muriatic acid. Get this stuff at the hardware stores. It probably, I'm, I'm hoping it's reasonably pure. A lot of times this stuff has uh, iron contamination. So that, that could potentially screw us up in the future, but we're going to give it a shot anyway. So I'm just going to add enough HCl to totally dissolve this big old chunk of aluminum here. And I'll, I'll add more if needed. But I'm going to let that react away, put a little cover on it. And I'll add a little weight on the top there. Hopefully this doesn't go too out of control. I might add some water to keep the reaction a little slowed down. That's going a bit faster than I'd like. And it's only going to continue to speed up. Isn't that what they teach you in chemistry class? Add water to acid? Something like that. Alright, so that should slow down the reaction a bit now that it's a little less... Uh, less concentrated and we are going to be generating quite a bit of hydrogen there as well just going to use a big old bearing ball sit in the center there help recondense some of the fumes so I will get back to you guys when this stuff is done dissolving in God knows how long alright so we've been bubbling away for about an hour here yep. oh my god need to order the excels not made for man hands. All right, and now I'm impatient, so I'm just gonna take the little remaining chunk of aluminum out of there. All right, we definitely got a good bit of aluminum dissolved. So you can see we got a good amount of carbon here as well, and my guess is that's probably from the actual, like the ink printing on the soda cans that probably burnt down, alloyed a little bit with the aluminum, and we're just gonna have to filter that out so we can get left with a reasonably pure solution of aluminum chloride. All right, fire up the vacuum. Excuse the fartage of it. Kill the pump. So, purely out of curiosity, that's a pretty thick layer of carbon. That's incredible. Very surprising. I, I was not expecting to see that in what I thought was relatively pure aluminum can alloy. So I'm thinking this probably came off the label, you know, the, the silk screen or whatever it is they do with the aluminum cans to get their label on there. And I'm thinking in the forge or foundry, it burned up, turned into carbon and alloyed with the aluminum. So that's quite a bit. That, that's not a negligible amount. So if you're working with melted can aluminum alloy that's probably something to look out for might you know throw you off if you're building something specific thinking you have pure aluminum but anyway got the original reaction beaker cleaned out get the water out of there and there is our hopefully pretty pure solution of aluminum chloride and now we're just going to react that with baking soda to precipitate out the aluminum hydroxide, I guess it would be at this point, and then we're just going to bake it off. So, Just using some of the cheap Walmart brand baking soda. I bought like 20 boxes of it way back when for like 40 cents a piece. So you can see this gelatinous aluminum uh, hydroxide or oxide, whatever because it's hydroxide at this point forming starting to get a little thick now the cool thing is aluminum oxide isn't just useful for making jewelry like synthetic rubies it's super super used in the industrial setting as an abrasive for polishing sanding uh, chances are if you have cheap sandpaper laying around it's, it's probably aluminum oxide based aluminium for you Brits watching. Beautiful country. 
can't wait to go back. So I'm just going to get this fully neutralized and bring you guys back for the results. Alright, so neutralized it all with the sodium bicarbonate here. And we're left with this thick, goopy, aluminum ejaculate, I mean precipitate, precipitates. And what we're going to have to do is get the sodium ions out of here because lots of sodium. So we're going to have to wash this a few times and let the aluminum precipitate settle out and yeah then get left with reasonably pure aluminum hydroxide we'll then bake that off to get aluminum oxide so just added a bunch of distilled water giving it a good American version of the Swiss helicopter here is it Swedish helicopter one of them one of them countries a European helicopter we'll call it just to get all them sodium ions out of there so I'm gonna repeat this rinse a few times. Should be left with relatively pure aluminum hydroxide. Looks like this <laughs> this uh, nice little bath here had some Taco Bell last night. All right, so I got the solution on the hot plate, just driving out the CO2, getting some nice dirty bubbles. So at this point I've rinsed it about seven or eight times with uh, reverse osmosis water, so reasonably pure water. Should have pulled all the sodium ions out at this point. We're going to coke it off, form aluminum oxide. I'm going to transfer it to a baking dish. You see it's a nice thick slurry. Looks a little familiar. <laughs> Never seen quite this much of it, but <laughs> that freaked the ladies out. In this old glass baking dish here. So I'm going to load this in the oven and we will be back shortly with hopefully pure aluminum oxide. So fresh out of the sleazy bake oven, we have our aluminum oxide. Took a while to drive off the water and then I bumped up the heat to about 450 to uh, make sure everything was converted over from the aluminum hydroxide. Now I'm sure you can notice it has a little bit of a pinkish hue. I think that might be due to some very small amount of residual iron that was in the HCL, the muriatic acid. Stuff is notorious for having iron in it. So hopefully that doesn't screw up the reaction. Now the other possibility is, or <laughs> shouldn't say possibility, other potential contaminant is the uh, magnesium that is used in the tops and bottoms of the aluminum cans. I didn't realize that when, uh, when I was originally going to do this that the top and bottom of the soda cans are of a different alloy. Slightly stronger alloy, but it has about 5% magnesium in it. So that could possibly screw us up, but hopefully we'll still be able to get Ruby out of this. You can see I've got my chromium oxide from Flea Bay. So guys, stay tuned. Next week, we're going to be giving a shot at making Ruby. As always, guys, please don't forget to thumbs up, subscribe. And if you like the channel enough, please don't forget to support me on Patreon so I can keep these videos coming. We are now up to a whopping nine patrons. About to break the 10 mark. Who's going to do it? <laughs> well, hope you guys enjoyed. I will see you next time. Have a good one.